dream of sitting for another promise a good tomorrow, but they were declared hostile Indian and were to be killed on sight. going back here. All right, so when uh, Reno, at present day Gary Owen, went into the timber over there, and that's where he, he, uh, he was, and they, once they saw that Custer wasn't in that bunch right there, or no, the bunch that went into the timber, there goes uh, somebody, that's a decoy there, I think, yeah. Okay. Boring prairie to go. Spent love and dreams can no longer keep, no longer keep the loaf that the rest of life's Remuda steams through their nostrils' rhythmic flow. Should have died when I was stuck to a wild horse. An old man reclined at her box bowl to life's meandering course, but then I remembered grandfather, remembering what the warriors would say. Coming early or late at night when alone leads me to think of where we would meet. 
I've taught them how to say goodbye to everyone I've met in the midst of a battle with the Buffalo Bulls next to a rattle. A warrior stands singing as whoops and hollers are ringing and with the rawhide around my ankle he shakes, he stakes himself to the ground. The end is now for I am no longer. The end is now for he no longer wants to handle the sacred fire of life. So he wants to give his body back to the water ground and when he drops his buffalo bull testicle while the cover rattle and draws out his knife and the rodeo from Moses that are different rides upon him fasting a skidding stop within the radius of the rawhide rope the death which fight begins in the dust of hooves when the dust settles he stood in the middle of four dead warriors from Moses that are different if it gets worse I can always kill myself, said the warrior that was spared. Okay, give him a nice round of applause. You were never afraid to die. a little big one for his attack to kill the hostile Indians or whoever was in the camp. This time, he faced the men, the mighty warriors of the Great Sioux Nation, the fearless fighting Cheyennes and Arapaho. Colester Yellowhair was wounded and went down, but the rest of his men were chased up to the high ridge. He never made it to the top. He was staked to the ground and his heart was cut out and his Sioux woman stuck a knife in his ear so he could hear better in the next world. He was thrown in the river. They said, what is bad? He said, down river. He would never ever return. Yet, Custer, yellow hair, and his men never saw the sunset on June 25th, 1876. Okay, they saw, the last time they saw Custer was over on Weir Point over there of Gary Owen, Montana, where the post office is. And then he came down right there where, where he where that uh, first horse is, a little bit down on the bottom here. This is where Custer actually crossed the river off to the left, where you can see over there. So now they're they're uh, they're on their own now. So the battle is is, is on now. They see Custer and they're going after Custer. All right, this is where, this is where you train.
for you.